pilonidal sinus is a blind tract which extend from the skin of natal cleft up to the presacral area an attribute of pilonidal to this particular sinus is to emphasize its unique feature of the presence of tuft of hair within it the etiology of the sinus has been hypothesized variously whereby the congenital theory of its origin yielded to the acquired nature of the condition in the 20th century when the sinus cropped up in jeep drivers during world war 2 presence of tuft of hair within the sinus is in around 60% of the cases is now considered important secondary event in the evolution of the sinus now this is one pilonidal sinus which has got two opening one in the midline and another in the form of a small abscess so we are instilling a dye to see for the extent of this sinus cavity and a fistula probe is passed to lay open this fistula, sinus tract with the help of a diode laser a pilocybaceous unit primed by male sex hormone in young adult male at the peculiar sacrococcygeal prominence with its mouth wide open to receive hair shafts seems to be the most acceptable theory for explaining the acquired model for the disease the model seems to provide place for various predisposing factors for sinus such as bumping in sitting posture excessive healthy body hair obesity family history and caucasian ethnicity the pilonidal disease is caused by hair invading the skin at the natal cleft this hair causes a foreign body reaction that commonly leads to hair filled abscess cavity midline pits are a sign for non of pilonidal disease and represent hair follicles that have become infected or inflamed the resulting folliculitis produce edema that obstruct each follicular opening over time hair shafts are drawn into the pits by motion from the buttocks which produce a vacuum effect however expulsion in the reverse direction is prevented by barbs on the hair shafts so once they enter into the cavity they don't can't come out even though there is a motion in the buttocks keratin ac accumulation distends the follicle which eventually form an epithelialized tube this tube may rupture into underlying subcutaneous fat forming an abscess when an abscess forms it drains back to the skin through true sinus tracts the etiology of pilonidal disease as a foreign body reaction is supposed by is supported by histological examination it demonstrate foreign body giant cells associated with hair shafts that are embedded in chronic granulation tissue lining the abscess cavity and sinus tract the majority of sinus tract extend cephalad towards the head but additional sinuses may branch laterally the diagnosis of pilonidal disease is most often a clinical one based on the patient's history and physical findings in the gluteal cleft especially in patients with chronic or recurrent disease symptoms related to pilonidal abscess include discomfort or pain and intermittent discharge or bleeding a small group of patient present with an acute abscess cephalad in the natal cleft this position distinguished the disease from other common anorectal problems such as peri rectal abscesses and anal fistulae which are typically found near the anus however it is important to distinguish pilonidal disease from alternative or concurrent diagnosis such as hideradenitis suppurativa infected skin furuncles prons disease peri anal fistula and infectious process including tuberculosis syphilis and actinomycosis on examination the presence of characteristic midline pits in the gluteal cleft in patients with pilonidal disease is usually visible sometimes with hair or debris extruding from the openings additionally where as in the acute setting patients may present with cellulitis or a painful fluctuant mass indicating the presence of an abscess the chronic state is most often manifested by chronic draining sinuses in the intergluteal fold and or recurrent episodes of acute infection it is also important to perform a thorough anorectal examination to evaluate for concomitant fistulous disease 
Crohn's disease or other anorectal pathologies, even though rare, a presacral mass should be ruled out by digital rectal examination. There are various conservative treatment of pilonidal sinus disease. However, and they are popular because of the high morbidity associated with surgical procedure of pilonidal disease. Conservative non-operative treatment for this, is, this disease constitutes meticulous hair control by shaving the natal cleft, better perianal hygiene, various experimental procedures and limited lateral incision and drainage of acute abscesses. Implementation of the conservative treatment strategy has resulted in a substantial decrease in the admission rates of pilonidal disease patients in the hospital. The efficacy and failure rate varies between institution and the surgeon and the most optimal type of conservative treatment is required to be tailored to suit the individual patient. A proportion of patients who are not suitable for conservative measures or who have severe worsening or recurrent disease should be offered a surgical reconstructive procedure by surgeon familiar with this technique. So, once we have laid open the entire fish sinus tract, removed the dead and infected material, the wound is left open to heal by secondary intention, no specific dressing or wound care required.